Welcome to the study guide review video for the 8th grade unit 3 test. The first question is just like the first question on the study guide review video for the quiz um, because the first questions are super similar. So there's a proportional relationship between the time in minutes and the volume of water in gallons in a sink. What's the rate of change for this proportional relationship? Explain the real world meaning of your number answer. Okay, so we see this is a proportional relationship because uh, when graphed, it looks like a line that goes through zero, zero. And if we want to find the rate of change, that means we're going to try to find the slope of this line. Okay, so to find the slope, I can pick any two points um, that I can clearly see are on the line. Um, in this case, I know I'm counting by ones. We always want to pay attention to what we're counting by. Um, on both the x and y axis. So this is a change or of a height of 2. And we see this means 2 gallons. Uh, and then my change in time or my base is we're counting 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going from 2 to 6. So this is 4 minutes. Okay, so my rate of change, uh, which again was the slope of this line is going to be the two gallons divided by four minutes and that's going to simplify to half a gallon per minute or uh, 0 0.5 gallons per minute okay and that's the basic idea but it does say to explain the real world meaning so just to be a little bit more clear you go back to this problem and we're talking about volume of water in a sink and time. Um, so this is saying that each minute the amount of water that's added to the sink is half a gallon or like a half a gallon of water is added per minute. So I'll write a sentence to say that. Okay, there we have it. Half a gallon of water um, is added to the sink each minute. On to question two, also about proportional relationships, and we had a very similar question on the t on the quiz. Amir is growing three plants. He keeps track of each plant's height over time. Which plant is growing the slowest? Okay, so here we have three proportional relationships. We're trying to find the rate of change for each of them, and then compare. So for plant one, I'm seeing this as in a graph form, um, and I can find the slope to find my rate of change. The thing we have to pay attention to pay attention to here is here, the two points I've picked, if we look on the y-axis, I'm counting by twos, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So we're going from four inches tall to eight inches tall. So this is really a change of four inches, even if it looks like um, it's two. Okay, so we have to see what, we're, what our scale is, what we're counting by. But down here for the months, we're going from two to four months. We're just counting by ones. So it grew four inches in two months. Okay, so when we divide that, that's going to give us um, our rate of change. Four inches in two months. So then we want to figure out, right, in one month, how much is it changing? That is going to be two inches per month. And we get that by... Um, dividing. Cool. Okay, so that's plant one. Then we do the same thing for plant two. We're trying to find the rate of change um, for a proportional relationship where you can just divide um, like the y coordinate divided by the x. We can do five divided by two. We can do 10 divided by four. We can do 15 divided by six, etc. Um, and all of those are going to be equal to 2.5. So 2.5 then is our rate of change or our slope. And it means plant 2 is growing 2.5 inches per month. And then finally, the equation. The equation is harder to understand conceptually, um, but it's the easiest to identify the rate of change for. In a proportional relationship, the rate of change in equation form is just the only number you say, see. It's the number that the like x is being multiplied by, and here t is x, time in months. So for plant 3, 
um, the plant's going growing 3.5 inches per month. Okay, and then the question, which plant is growing the slowest? That is going to be plant one in this case, um, because plant one grows only two inches per month, um, where plant two and plant three grow two and a half and three and a half inches per month. So I'll write a sentence explaining that. Okay, plant one grows the slowest because it grows the least number of inches each month. Cool, and I have the work to show that. All right, question three is our spicy level proportional relationships question. Uh, we have a store selling four bracelets for $8. There is a proportional relationship between the number of bracelets purchased, X, and the total cost, Y, of the bracelets. Complete the table graph and equation representation of this relationship, and then complete the blanks to explain what the rate of change is and what it means for this scenario. Okay, so we have that Four bracelets cost $8, so we can do 8 divided by 4, uh, which is 2, to figure out what the rate of change is here, okay? Or, I mean, we can look at it and probably know 4 times 2 is 8, uh, but if you ever don't know, we can always do y divided by x, y here divided by x, 8 divided by 4 to get the rate of change. Okay, and then we just continue this, so if we buy 0 bracelets, uh, we're going to multiply by 2. We're going to get pay $0, right? As sounds right. If we buy one bracelet, we do 1 times 2. It's going to cost $2. If we buy two bracelets, we're going to do 2 times 2. It costs $4. And if we buy five bracelets, we're going to do 5 times 2, and it costs $10. Okay, now that I have my table, I can go ahead and plot these. So I have the point 0, 0, 1, 2. 2, 4, 4, 8, and 5, 10. And then I'm going to draw a line connecting this, and we should see this looks like a line that goes through 0, 0, just like all proportional relationships look. And then finally for the equation, right, if we want to figure out our cost, y, we can see what we did in the table. We took the number of bracelets, x, and we multiplied that by 2. So the equation is just going to be y equals 2x. Okay, and this is the general form for a proportional relationship, like we had up here. You have your y variable, um, like the second column, the thing you're trying to find. Height is equal to the constant of proportionality, or the rate of change, times your x variable, or the like, left column. Okay, so we're multiplying $2 per bracelet, and that gives me the cost. So the rate of change for this relationship, like we already talked about, is 2. And that means that each bracelet costs $2. Uh, so now we're moving on to the non-proportional relationships, linear relationships generally. We have lines, but they don't necessarily go through 0, 0. Question 4 is multiple choice. The graph shows the highest temperature each day for two weeks in Lubbock, Texas and New Orleans, Louisiana. Which statement is true? The highest temperature in La Boxed increases each day. Okay, so let's look here. Here is my La Boxed line. Um, and it, are we seeing this increase each day? Does this line appear to be increasing? No. Um, the temperature is staying the same. Right, this has a constant, this is like a slope of zero. Um, it's a horizontal line, so it's not increasing or decreasing. Okay, um, the highest temperature in New Orleans is decreasing steadily. Okay, here's my New Orleans line. Over time, this line is increasing. This has a positive slope, not decreasing. So that one's going to be wrong. C, the highest temperature in Lubox was never the same as the highest temperature in New Orleans. Okay, we see that these two lines intersect right here at this point. So they're the same at that point. Okay, so that's not correct. And then finally, initially the highest temperature was warmer in Lubox than in New Orleans. 
that is true. So initially at the very beginning, the low box was all the way up here, higher temperature than the New Orleans starting temperature was. But eventually New Orleans surpasses it. Great. So just kind of testing your ability to read a graph and think about what the slopes of the lines mean. All right, next, question five. The graph represents the number of inches of snow on the ground, y, after x hours of sun. The equation y equals negative one-third times x plus six models this linear relationship. A, what is the slope of this line, and what is its real-world meaning in this scenario? Okay, so the slope of the line, um, we could find it from the graph, but it's already given to us in the equation. The slope of the line is negative one-third. Okay, and again, I see that from my equation. It's the number that x is multiplied by. That's always going to be my rate of change or my slope. Um, I can see it quickly in the graph. If I pick like this point and this point, I'm going down one, right three. Okay, so my slope is negative one-third. What does it mean here? Okay, so we're talking about snow, right? We're talking about the amount of snow on the ground after X hours of sun. So just thinking about it logically for a second, as sun goes, sun comes out and we have snow on the ground, eventually the snow is gonna melt, right? The amount of snow is gonna decrease. And that's what we see in our graph. The amount of snow on the ground is decreasing, okay? Because it's like melting away. So that's what my slope is talking about. Specifically, it's telling me that um, it's how much snow is melting per hour. Okay, so this means that each hour, because the rate is telling you for like one unit, each hour, one third of an inch of snow melts away. Okay, so the amount of snow is decreasing by a third of an inch each hour. Okay, and that's my rate of change. That's my slope. In B, it says what's the y-intercept of this line? So our y-intercept is like our starting value. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. Here's my y-axis. And I can see clearly that my y-intercept is 6. I can also see that clearly from the equation. I have my plus 6 here. Okay, so my y-intercept is going to be 6. And then I can explain what this means. Um, that's saying at hour 0, right at the very beginning, when there's been no hours of sun, it's how much snow is on the ground. So that means, like, at the beginning, there's 6 inches. Uh, okay, at the beginning, there's 6 inches of snow on the ground. Cool. And then finally, after how many hours of sun is there no snow left on the ground? So again, we're starting with six inches of snow, and then each hour, a third of an inch of snow melts away. So we just want to look at this graph and see, okay, when is it all gone? Okay, and that's going to happen right here after 18 hours, because that's when there is now zero inches of snow on the ground, right? It's when we've hit our x-axis. Um, you could also do it like sort of mathematically. If you do um, 18 times one third, you're going to get six. So you start at six and then you're taking away after 18 hours, six inches of snow. Cool. All right, question six, which equation represents the line shown on the coordinate plane to the right? Um, so we just need to write an equation for this line. We see this is a proportional relationship. It goes through 0, 0. So our y-intercept is like 0. Um, but we can, we not need to find the slope. So we pick two points on the line. We create a slope triangle. Right, slope here is our height divided by my base. The height of this slope triangle is 3. The base is 4. So the slope would be 3 fourths, except we want to make sure we're paying attention here. This line is going down, right? The line is going down. So when I think of my height as 3, it's really like a height of negative 3, right? Because it's going down. 
So I should have this equation, y equals negative 3 fourths times x, okay, because my slope or my rate of change is negative 3 fourths. Cool. Question 7, write an equation for each line. Okay. Um, important, can be challenging, but definitely an important takeaway for this unit. We want to be able to write in equations of lines that are graphed. So here I have a vertical line, and something I know about um, this vertical line is that every single point along the line is going to have an x-coordinate of 3, right? Like this is 3, 4, this is 3, 0, this is 3, negative 5. Every point along that line is going to have an x-coordinate of 3. So the equation for this line is x equals 3. And the equation for any vertical line is, has the form x equals some number. Um, and that's the x-coordinate for every point along it. Okay, I'm going to skip quickly to 7.4 because that's the same idea. Here we have a horizontal line. And if I pick any point on this line, um, the x-coordinate is going to change, but my y-coordinate will always be negative 2, right? Because this is down at negative 2. So the equation for this line is y equals negative 2. Okay, it could also be y equals 0x minus 2, um, because we know we have a slope of 0. But, right, if you have 0 times x, you're just getting 0. So the x can just go away. Okay, and then for the other two, um, to write an equation of a line, we have slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. m is my slope. b is the y-intercept. So I'm going to have something in the form of y equals blank x plus blank. Uh, we'll start with the y-intercept. This crosses the y-axis right there at negative 6. So we're going to have either plus negative 6, or you can write this as just like minus 6. Uh, we've slid down 6. And then we need to find the slope of the line. Pick any two points I can clearly see. Here we have a height of 3 and a base of 1. So it's going to be a slope of 3 divided by 1. Uh, which just simplifies to 3. So y equals 3x minus 6. Uh, both of these are right. I mean, this is a little bit nicer, the second one, but um, I definitely give you credit for either of them. But this one's a little more simplified. Okay, and then we're doing the same thing here for this line. We're going to have y equals something x plus something. Uh, my y-intercept here is 5. Okay, that's where the line crosses the y-axis. And to find the slope, I can pick any two points I can clearly see. Here I'm going down 5, right 5. Uh, so my slope would be like negative 5 divided by 5x. Um, negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. So you could write this as y equals negative 1x plus 5. Or you could write this as y equals negative x plus 5, too. Cool. Beautiful. Question 8. A restaurant charges $10 for each burrito and a $5 delivery fee. What's the total cost to have four burritos delivered? Okay, so this is not a proportional relationship. It is a linear relationship because we have a constant rate of change of $10 for each burrito. But it's not proportional because we have this $5 delivery fee that we have to pay um, just one time, right? So no matter how many burritos you order, you don't have to pay the delivery, like, delivery fee times the number of burritos, but you have to pay it once always. So if I have four burritos delivered, I'm going to have to pay four times ten for the cost of the burritos, right? This is $40 for the burritos. And then I have to add the $5 delivery fee. So in total, you'd have to pay $45. 
Okay, so if I want to sort of generalize this then, I can write an equation to represent the total cost y. To find the cost, I'm going to multiply my rate of change or my slope by 10. I'm going to do 10 times the number of burritos I have delivered, which we have here as x. Um, and then I'm going to add the $5 delivery fee, like I did here, just once. So it doesn't get multiplied by the x, I just have to pay $5. Okay? Um, and then I'm going to make a graph of the total cost of the delivery for up to 15 burritos. Mm. Okay, I'm just, I'm going to get rid of this. You could do that, but uh, I'm just going to count by ones down here because that's the way I made it on the test. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just going to count by ones, but you could count by twos if we were trying to get up to 15. Okay, um, and then in terms of the total cost, we think about what do we want to count by. Okay, so right on the x-axis, this is the number of burritos ordered. We want to label that. And then on the y-axis, we're going to have the total cost. Um, so since we're multiplying by 10 for the number of burritos and there's a $5 delivery fee, you could count by fives, you could count by tens. Got an argument for both. I think I'll count by fives. Okay. Um, so then we're going to try to complete this, okay, plotting a couple of these points. So if I buy, uh, we have this example, if I buy four burritos, it's going to cost $45. Okay, if I buy one burrito, I'm going to have to pay the $10 for the burrito plus the $15, or plus the $5 delivery fee, so it would cost $15. If I buy two burritos, it'd be 2 times 10, which is 20, plus a $5 delivery fee. Um, three burritos would be 3 times 10, which is 30, plus a $5 delivery fee of 35. Um, and, right, we could connect these and form a line. Okay, so our y-intercept here is 5, which makes sense, just like we had in our equation. Um, it's a little bit weird because it's like they wouldn't actually deliver to you if you didn't buy anything. But like if you bought zero burritos, the idea is you still have to pay the $5 delivery fee if they're going to come to your house. Okay, so starting at five and then we increase by 10 each time. Awesome. And last but not least, Marquise is started an L... Sorry. Marquis started at an elevation of 2,500 feet and hiked down a mountain at a constant rate. His elevation decreased 250 feet per hour. Graph the relationship between Marquis's elevation and time as he hiked down the mountain. Okay, so things to pay attention to. He hiked down the mountain. So that means we should have a negative slope. Okay, because it's going down... Um, the elevation is decreasing. Marquis started at 2,500 2, feet, and then again is going down by 250 feet per hour. So my starting elevation, that is giving you the y-intercept, and the 250 feet, that's giving you the slope. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start out by plotting, we're going to graph the relationship, so I'm going to put a point here, zero hours, we're starting at 2,500, and then we're going down 250 feet per hour. Um, so after one hour, uh, he would be here at like 2,250 feet. After two hours, he would be here at 2,000 feet um, because 200, right, it's like 250 times 2 is 500. So every two hours, going down 500 feet. So every two hours, in this case, going down 500 feet. And you could have these in the middle if we wanted. Okay, and then we can connect it, put an arrow. Right, and we should see we have a line 
So it's a linear relationship. It doesn't start at zero, zero, because it's not proportional. Um, it starts at 2,500, the, his initial height, and we have a negative slope it's going down over time. Cool. Um, so in terms of the table, so complete the table showing Marquise's elevation at different times during the hike. So here we can just sort of look at the graph we made, or we could have done the table first to then help us graph it. Um, but at zero hours, we know the starting elevation is the 2,500 feet. And then here, right after two hours, we get to 2,000 feet. And again, the reason for that is if we do two times 250, which is our slope, we get 500. So then you're doing the 2,500 minus 500, and you get 2,000. Okay, and then we can do the same sort of, sort of thing. Um, we could either look at our graph. We go to five hours. And at five hours, he'll be at 1,250 feet. Okay, I can see that in the graph because I know that's in between 1,000 and 1,500. Um, but I could also do the work. I could say, okay, after five hours each hour, he's going down 250 feet. So I do five times 250, and that's going to give me 1,250. And then we started at 2,500 feet, so I subtract. 1,250 from 2,500, and then you get 1,250. So definitely some work there. Um, the numbers are a little bit easier than this on the test. Um, so that should help a little bit. But the same idea you should be able to do. And finally, we want to write an equation relating the number of hours hiked x and Marquise's elevation in feet y. This is a line, right? It's a linear relationship. So we can have the form y equals mx plus b. Again, where m is our slope or our rate of change, and b is the y-intercept. OK, so here, um, my slope is that 250 feet per hour. But remember, it's a negative slope, right? It's a negative slope because it's decreasing. So my slope is going to be negative 250 times x, which is our time, or in hours. And then we're starting with our original elevation of 2,500. Okay, that's like the standard way to write it, but it might make more sense in this problem to write it like this. That would also be correct. It's equivalent. Um, you're starting at 2,500, and then you're subtracting 250 each hour. Okay, good job watching this. Um, honestly, I think it's a pretty hard test. Um, I mean, if you understand all the questions on this, you'll be in great shape. But this is a hard concept. It takes a lot of practice. So good for you for watching the study guide. And make sure you do, do the practice. Good luck, everyone.